Good afternoon, everyone. So how do you guys like this morning? Was it busy? Yeah? That was pretty epic. Do you guys count the amount of times that the word API was used? A anyone memorize that at all? No? Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is there are a lot more to come. The bad news is you're going to have to keep your brains on at least till about 5 o'clock today. Um, so I want to kick this off and kick off this track with probably talking about a problem that we share, that, that everyone in this room probably shares, that I've had for my entire life, and it's, it's gotten me pretty stressed out. And I want to share it so we're on the same page and we get into the mood of what we're going to talk about in this track. So let me talk about what it felt like when I'm sitting in presentations like this morning, right? When we've got great product announcements, you can tell that there's a lot of attention being put into place into the videos and the animations. There's only one, th one thing I'm thinking about during that whole time. I'm going, how did they build that? It's like, is that a prototype or is that for real? Do you guys, is that what's going through your minds as well? Is there an API for that? Will I be able to extend that in some way, right? I call that the curse of the builder, right? Which is you can never sit still in a talk and not think about how it's being built. So this track, this track's built for you because I built it a bit for me which is for all of those out there who has that curse of being a builder and always having to think about how we have to make that possible, that's what we've built this track for. And we put together, we only had nine slots, and we put together the nine talks that we thought are going to really power you guys out the most for making that a possibility. Because I know a lot, of, a lot of things happen today, and you heard that word API several times. We're going to give you a lot of tools today to, to help that. So I think that's, that's priority number one, is this talk is being built for you. The second thing is um, we've all been in that position where we've built something for someone, right? I still remember the first Shopify app that I built right, many years ago. Um, I was actually helping a shop who was selling pretty heavy stuff, right? So stuff that um, couldn't be shipped. So it had to have, most of it was in-store pickup or delivered kind of locally. Um, and one of the challenges the merchant had at that point was a lot of time when you're, you're shipping heavier things, um, people don't want to pay up front, right? They, they maybe want to pay up front, but they want to see it. So, you know, I, I talked to that merchant, and I'm like, I can fix that. I think I can build that for you, right? And then at, at that point, you dive into the code. I'm like, okay, how do script tags work, right? How many people here have struggled with strip, script tags, right? Yeah, a couple people in the back. How do I get that button on the online store? How am I going to build my admin API? This was pre-Polaris. Right? So going through my mind was, how do I make sure that the, ad I'm, the app I'm going to build is going to be as beautiful as the rest of Shopify? Right? So I'm Googling CSL style sheets and, and trying to figure out how to do that, right? that. All of those building mode things. Right? So I, I went from that merchant problem, I dove really deep into the code, trying to make that a possibility. What I, what I ended up doing for that merchant was I ended up building um, an auctioning site so that someone could come to the online store, and if they wanted to reserve an item, they can reserve it. After it was reserved, there was a scheduling email that was sent out. And the buyer can come and actually see and view the product. And if they decide to buy it, they can pay. Actually, I had the POS app. They could just pay with, via the POS app in person. And they can take the item. But during that transition period, there was a product that was in flight. It was reserved, but it wasn't sold yet. And what that merchant wanted to do, and you, you heard a lot about that this morning, is the merchant wanted to get more sales. right? They don't want to lose sales. They don't want to spend all this time and having an item reserved for a bit of time. They want to get sales. So what we ended up putting on the online store was a bit uh, reservation list, where you can go in and you can see an item that was reserved. You can go in, put your email address, and say, actually, I know it's reserved, but I'm going to pay a bit more. I'm going to upbid that by $10, by $100. So after all that time of looking at the documentation, working where am I going to host my app, getting it built. The most satisfying part of that entire experience is when the merchant came to me and said, Jean-Michel, I got five items that got up built, and I made an extra $500 because of your app, right? And I think that was the thing that when we're deep in the bowels of building things, we always forget and we get disconnected with. And I think that's the thing that I want to make sure everyone here understands is even as builders, I think it's our responsibility to understand how commerce works that we're here to build things that actually help merchants make sales, help them improve their business, and there's limited amount of options of doing that.
So my first app definitely laid a, laid a mark on me, I think, um, at how we actually build out Shopify. You've seen over the years, we've had a huge investment into our platform, um, and also a huge investment into how we think about extensibility. You might not have noticed, hopefully you did, in almost every one of the keynotes from this morning, there was an app mentioned, right? There was an extensibility point that was mentioned. If you remember Lindsay's talk from this morning, she talked and showed the orders page, right? So everything we're building in the Shopify, we're making it extensibility. And we're thinking about extensibility from day one. We're looking at apps that can fulfill orders, right? We know that it happens manually, but apps can fulfill orders. If you've noticed as well, we looked at the marketing section, right? And I know as well, as you, as you look at some of the keynotes and you look at some of the product uh, announcements, if I can read into some of what your, your minds are thinking, you're like, holy smokes, is Shopify building everything into Shopify, right? Like, what are, you, what are you leaving? What's left? What else are we gonna fill? But I think it's a bit like the experience I had when I built my first app, right? There's actually limited possibilities, and the one commi commitment I do wanna make to you is that every new feature we're adding to Shopify, we're actually thinking about how to make it extensible. So just think about the marketing section. Right? The most powerful part of the marketing section is actual apps are going to be built by the ecosystem to explore all these funky ways of actually doing the marketing. Right? In the same way that the, the online store experience right, was extensible because there's all these different ways of having storefronts. And I think that's our commitment we're making today. The other commitment that we've made, um, and also uh, given that I leave the engineering at Shopify, I've got a bit of, of weight, which is a couple of years ago I said, we're not going to launch APIs that we don't use ourselves. So our GraphQL API that you're going to see more of today powers all of Shopify, right? We we're not launching an API just for you. <laughs> We've launched it for us together, right? So it's battle hardened. We use it. It runs Shopify Mobile. If you ever use Shopify Mobile, it's been running behind the scenes for over a year in Shopify Mobile, right? So I think that's our commitment to you. Our commitment to you as well is to look at all these new extensibility options and, and, and make sure that they're available as we launch new features. So obviously, we need a lot of help to fill in these white space. We think that the opportunities are, are almost endless, right? I was really, I was really inspired last year. Um, we had a, a game SDK, and my son downloaded it. I was play, playing Alto's Adventure, right? And he's like, hey, Dad, I can, I can buy a t-shirt in Alto's Adventure. I'm like, cool. That's our API that drove that, that we launched last year, right? So keep your eyes open. Although you might still have the mind of a developer, I think one thing that would help everyone here as you grow your own business, whether it be your development shop or your theme builder, is practice being connected to merchants, right? We do this within the engineering team at Shopify a lot, right? We know that we have to understand what mer merchants are doing because that's where we actually understand and see the opportunities. We put ourselves in your shoes and we think about as developers at Shopify, we have to understand how our ecosystem are going to be building on Shopify. We have some amazing talks today about some of the developer tools that we've built into our platform that make it easy to discover and use Polaris, makes it a lot easier to, to look at API playgrounds and sandboxes. So again, that's our commitment to you as well, is we will make sure we work really hard at guaranteeing that everything that we release, we've actually used and battled hard in this. So what do we have in store for you today then? A couple things. The first thing is um, we split the talks into two parts. The first part is a couple of the key APIs that we're launching today that you've seen, right? I think the three big ones that have been announced today. So you're pro probably all curious about multi-location inventory, right? How's that going to work? How's it going to affect you? So that's the first talk of the day. Um, marketing and some of the discounts and price rules APIs as well. But the second part of the tracks is they're really, really bringing and sharing techniques and tools for how to scale your companies as well, right? Whether you have one developer or 100 developers back in your offices building apps on our platform, what kind of tools could you have to make that easier? So one of the, one of the, the talks that I'm really excited about is um, you might have noticed or might not have noticed that we rewrote our entire web front end at Shopify on new technologies, right? On React, we use TypeScript, and we use GraphQL. Um, we're going to show you how some of these technologies have made us really quick, right? It's improved the, the speed of innovation within Shopify. 
Um, but again, our commitment is we're going to share some of those techniques and tools, and we've open sourced some of that work so you guys can have access it to it at, as well. Now, we have a lot of the engineers and designers that have been behind all of these features that are here available for you to talk to, and I think that's really important for you to, to take advantage of. Um, we also have a lawyer here, right? But he's really cool, I promise. Probably the coolest lawyer you've ever met. His name's Vivek. Because um, as we've been building this ecosystem together, right, I'm sure there's another word that's on everyone's mind, which is GDPR and privacy, right? Which is we're dealing with our merchants' businesses, right? This is their livelihood. Where are we storing the data? There's this new regulation coming out, of which we're actually big fans of. You know, we believe that if, if the internet and technology can be seen as, as being safe and, and having kind of guidelines of how we engage, then that's probably going to be better for the internet in the long term, right? The, the trust that people can have in the technology we're building is going to be really important. So Vivek's going to be up, again, a very cool lawyer, to talk about and demystify about what GDPR is, because I think that's a tool that not just business people have to understand, but I think we have to understand as developers who are building platforms and products that, that manage and transfer our, our merchants' data, right? So I'm really excited about that. So I guess to, to end it up and get things kicked off with the multi-location team, I just want to remind you again to take advantage of all the face-to-face -face time. Um, I know this, this venue is a bit complicated. There's a lot of different spots to discover. But there's an office hours uh, room that's basically behind the main stage if you go all the way back. There's these little rooms with paper that spins out onto the table and pens. Um, everyone should go to office hours and ask all the questions you have. I think that's why we all travel here to be together that we can actually have all your questions answered. We, we uh, obviously, a, le a lot less than last year, we had to travel a lot of Shopify employees, a lot of engineers and designers are here. They're itching to hear your questions. So please take advantage of that. Um, and we also have the sandbox that's available where we're going to do some demos. I think um, our developer tools teams are going to give you some really cool demos of how to get started and how to really supercharge some of your developer workflows. So I guess without further ado, um, I'm really proud of all the teams at Shopify and all of you that you've helped giving feedback over the last couple of months that we've, we've polished some of the tools. Um, I'd like to say thank you for joining the build track and have a great rest of the day at Unite. Thank you very much.